letting you know what has been colonized and why. It is within this realm that all of your creative mentalities, all of the creative electrodynamics that you use as thought processes are taken form, are given a matrix by which to manifest itself. Within the nation of the Magi, which is essentially the etheric realms, thought has the four elements of the word unimpeded. This is why, as I spoke before, they do their best to paralyze your children's imagination and colonize it by infusing their imagination with symbols that displace their ability to create higher thought forms and bring it to this reality. That is why Pokemon was invented. That is why Scooby-Doo and all the rest of these ridiculous characters have been put into your children's imagination so that they can offset and circumvent the ability of your child to talk with realms on the other side. If your children are preoccupied in their dreams and in their waking state with symbols that keep their mind focused in realms that were orchestrated by the Illuminati and by the Archons themselves, then the symbols of the Archons, the little demons that they give your children to play with, become the materials that they bring from the other side. So within your imagination, there is a sovereign nation that has been colonized. And until you receive that back and become sovereign within your thoughts first, right. you will never be sovereign in your body. Yes. Because there was an attack and it is a constant barrage and attack against the nation of the Magi, your Imagi nation. And it is in that realm do we need for us to come together to find the solutions for the time to clear that mind, that nation, or that consolidated, uh, 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 colonized portion of our perception. That must be swept clean for us to now receive the light codes that are beaming in at this very moment, but are obscured by the distorted information. We are told that the 13 heavens are light-based frequencies that our solar system will pass through. 13 converging light-based heavens or beacons that would catapult us into oblivion or usher us into a paradise of one conscious space and time. This is the time known as the time of the 13 lords of light and the nine lords of darkness. The 13 lords of light and the nine lords of darkness. Now, if you don't think that the Illuminati is seriously into using information as their own, you're going to miss it. Last time I showed you this symbol, but inside of all the symbols, hopefully you've done your homework, Inside of all of the symbols, you will understand that they are constantly giving you symbols like the number 13. So in the McDonald's symbols, you get the number 13 hidden. In the RB symbol, you get the number 13. So each time that we are about to ascend to a new place. The Illuminati already has the sigils. Remember that word, S-I-G-I-L. Sigils in place to co-opt whatever light code frequencies would give us engramic imprints, symbols for our own mind 
to conceive and congeal and coagulate into reality. So these sigils put up all over the place, like Exxon with the double cross. Every one of these symbols that you see have a purpose to offset your thinking process, to offset your higher dynamic thinking process. Put out the light for a minute, please. This is the 13th number of the tarot card deck. The 13 represents death, but only to the uninitiated. 13 represents a transition from the old to the new. And if you look down here, you will see that the fish on the head is standing on the ground where everything else, death has stepped on and is going to be walking across. The old paradigm is gone. But if you notice in the background, this is how I will show you that the, the, the towers themselves were built on a vortex to be destroyed in this time. Because in the background, you will notice two towers. And beyond those towers, what do you see? Sun. The sun representing what? Light and a new day, a new dawn. So, how does the Illuminati circumvent your ability again to have a sigil? You look at the back here and you will see that this is, forget all of this, these are the symbols to make them recognize where it is they're going with their information. The five, we we're going to get to later. All of this information is symbolic. You know that the Pope himself is entreating death. Death going to step on his ass too. <laughs> but on this you will see that this is where you are to keep your focus if you are initiated. So if you look at the horizon, you will see that the Illuminati has already circumvented the intuitive sigils that the new time is going to broadcast to you through the DAC code transmissions. You will always be receiving new data for the new time. But if you want to control somebody, you want to make sure that they do not have the ability to access those codes. So what do you do? You put up symbols that interfere. And again, you see, the one who was running for president, his company. The one I'm banded. The one I'm banded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True that. Now, we have accomplished half of the journey. That is, to the final cycle of darkness, to the ninth gate of chaos, where humanity is now participating in a pathological indulgence with its own self-destruction. The choice from here on is spirituality. It is prosper, spirituality, or perish. And this is the problem. The great question now becomes, as we stumble through this maze of madness, will we be cogent enough to recognize or calculate the codes of redemption in time to save our own asses. In fact, it may be more safe to put the transition time for our planet at 2010 through 2024. The Olmec Mayan calendar Aztecs say, and I quote, this is a quote from their prophecies, know that for five full cycles of the dawn star, the rule of the warlike strangers 
would grow into greater and greater orgies of death and destruction. Also, remember well what I have taught you and return not to the ways of the serpent and the sacrificers, to the eating of flesh and the drinking of blood. This path will lead only to the final destruction. Know that the end time will come in five full cycles of the dawn star, for the cosmos is eternal and never fails. For five is the number of the earth, the earth being eight. Now, the dawn star is what? Venus. Venus is who? Lucifer. Venus cycles the earth every 104 years. You take the five cycles mentioned earlier and multiply them by 104 and you get 520 years. These 520 years according to the Olmec calendar comes due 2012. The number of the earth frequency is eight, thus the eight pointed star. Now, the number five is actually the difference between the eight, which is the number of the earth, and the harmonic number 13, which is the number of the children of destruction. The number five is the number of the children of destruction. The word earth, and here's what you have to understand, the word earth is actually to mean the destination of all things manifested in matter through the agency of the four basic elements. This is the secret of Solomon's temple. The word earth, as we use earth, has nothing to do with the planet. The word earth is all that is manifested. Everything that is in material form is earth. Just because you don't see legs sprouting out of the planet does not mean that it is not conscious and is, hap is happening right now to be evolving. So when you look at the word Solomon, you will see that the central four is expressed as the first mathematical number from which all elements of the spirit and the numbers one, two, and three, the next harmonic four being the vibrational matrix of matter. So what you are looking at here is that one, two, three, three representing the first closed circuit, the first closed circuit in the etheric plane, the plane of fire, thus coming down into the realm of matter, all three of these being the preliminary numerics that drop into matter, into the third density realm when the four elements comes, comes due. But, Overstanding, and I'm giving this to you in the beginning before we go forward. The number four is the pivotal integer in the numerics of the word Solomon. It also represents the inner sanctuary of every manifested temple in nature. The sum of each couple, eight, or the first principle of containment is the cube. So if you double the eight of four, and this is just giving you preliminaries, If you double the four, you essentially end up getting the cube. The cube is the first containment for which all the elements on the higher plane and the lower plane come together to create third density. And that's where you get the 12 apostles from, because the 12 apostles that come together to create the 13th, which is that circle within the middle, that gives us our point of reference for third density. You count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It becomes the structure that brings together the cube. Those particular parts are called the 12 apostles that actually framed or brought Jesus, actually Jesus supposedly brought them together to create manifested or, uh, density in matter. Now. Eight equals the number of all the elements manifested, thus the number of earth, the container of all elements. Now, the ancient Olmec said, when they have polluted the earth, this is another one, to such an extent that the number of earth becomes as 13, 
then in that moment shall they be no more. Again, the difference between the earth harmonic 8 and the so-called Christ harmonic 13 is 5. In numerical frequency of Solomon, we find that Solomon represents matter as perfected being, as expounded in the Hermetic doctrine where the four consonants symbolize the evolution of matter through the four objective states. Now, we told you that five was the number of the children of destruction. On the higher metaphysical realms, what does that mean? If you look at Solomon and the consonants of Solomon, S-L-M-N, it breaks down into the objective states of being. The objective states of being are mineral, vegetable, animal, and human. Objective means that which is expressed. Subjective which means that is which is impressed. If you look at the Temple Solomon, and we are looking at creation as we look at Solomon, because Solomon never existed, Solomon simply is a metaphysical principle. If you look at the dynamics and the mathematics of Solomon, you will see 1, 3, 5, and 7. But you will see that what they mean is that the children of destruction are on which realm? The animal realm. Dealing with their lusts. Their immediate physical egotistical gratification. They have not yet ascended to the cycle that gives them the pivot, that gives them self-realization. And all of those who are in Circle 7 know what I'm talking about. The energy itself with the consonants and objective states of being means that all of the vibrational levels from mineral to vegetable right now, everything from this point here is being destroyed. Symbolically as well as intuitively. And if you follow through or follow them, no matter how frightening and how mad and crazy it gets, if you follow through with the beast and pick up on the five harmonic, you're going down with them. And the only way that you will find yourself is if you submit to this. The prophets go on to say, the dream shall alter as our Father in heaven, who, Nabku, has a plan, a great plan that cannot be altered. There shall be a shifting, a great shaking, and all things shall be touched, even the stones, and in a moment there shall be a newness and a great swelling of light that will fill the heavens and block out even the light of our own sun in its brightness. And the world shall split all as all will in the heavens in that moment. And in that moment, you shall be where your heart is. And for time as we know it, shall be no more. Time as we know it, shall be no more. You can read about this in Robert Ghost Wolf's, Robert Ghost Wolf's book called Days of Destiny. Another good book that you need to read is called A Monument to the End of Time. A Monument to the End of Time by Vincent Bridges and Jay Wiedner. Now, This was found in a small place in France. It's called the Hendaye Cross. It's in a little village called Hendaye. And I know I'll get into it the next time because it's very complicated, though it speaks to what is happening right now. This is what we're on it. These are the symbols. You have something erected in France that has all make Mayan carvings on it? What were they trying to say at that particular point? On that particular cross, down here being the part that you see here, that's the sun. Well, actually, this is the way it is. This is the sun. 
This is the moon. Look at it. These are the four elements, and that is the earth. How many, how many points? Eight, exactly. Now, do you see something familiar on that cross? churches, you will continue to suffer for not going through the portal that is being created here for you because the shit's going to close up. They are trying to shut down the consciousness that is necessary to keep the portal open. By what? Yeah, but you see there's two different types of fear. I told you that fear is false evidence appearing real. Check. But you know, fear is also flat earth analog relativity. What was the Europeans' concept of the planet? Flat! flat. How the hell are you going to look up at the earth, look up at the, uh, look up at the full moon and think the earth is flat? That's where his mind is. He's in a flat earth analog. What's an analog? Something that imitates. Something that's like something. So he has created an analog relativity with his virtual reality that you now sink your consciousness into called the web. And you have taken your attention and put it into that reversed eye of Heru, which now gives you information rather than tapping you into your spirituality. I can deluge you with shit, man, and that, that thing has so much information that you could never in your rest of your life tap into it. But that's the distraction. If we don't take what we do find there and convert that shit and then shut it down, and then maybe another month maybe come back to see where we at, then what we are doing is we are lockstepping into the flat earth analog relativity that they're structuring for us. And we have become lock-stepped into it. Now, having begun our journey from a metaphysical tip, I will now take us through the present trials that we as dream walkers and dream changers and dream makers face. These trials are just the beginning. If you focus your second attention and even your third attention, you will see that the trials are coming in sequences. The more desperate the acts of the beasthood, the stranger, the more potent the response of nature. Therefore, beloved, there will be, and in your second and third attention, is a focus. You will discover in that focus that the one who is truly conducting the campaign of bio-warfare on us is the planet Mother Earth herself. This ain't shit. 
There ain't no real biochemical warfare. It's what we are trying to do because the true one that's going to conduct the biochemical warfare on us in the next 10 years is Earth Mother. And you're going to see war like you ain't never seen before. Coastlines are going to disappear. You want bio warfare? You're going to get it. And here's what I'm going to say. Now why do I say this? Well, let us stop for a moment and access the language we are being given to define the present moment of this crumbling paradigm. When we say bio warfare, what is implied? The word bio is Greek for life. The prefix denotes living things, biology, biographical. The definition of war is as follows, a state of open armed, often prolonged conflict carried on between nations, states, and parties. A condition of active antagonism or, con or contention to be in a state of hostility. This is where the earth is going. So when you hear the word of the media and the government state that there is a threat from biological warfare, a logical pairing of the two words would mean hostility, antagonism, or conflict with life. But the technical definition given by Webster is even more succinct. Biological warfare is warfare in which disease-producing microorganisms or organic biocides are used to destroy livestock, crops, and human life. There ain't a biological weapon created by man that's going to do the shit that the biological weapon created by nature is getting ready to do. It would appear that from the technical definition, the Caucasoid, by his very presence, his very presence, and his very culture, his very mindset is toxic to our environment. What type of mind, what type of thought process, what type of psychotic dementia would conceive and implement methodical steps to turn aspects of life into weapons of death, except a diseased mind? Yes. In naturopathic medicine, the therapists work with the patient to help the body bring the disease to the surface. For the past 500 years, a disease within the human genetic strain has been slowly rising to the surface. And finally, in these last days of our present consciousness paradigm, we see him at last. Rejoice, brothers and sisters, our healing is at hand. The spirit body of man is in its final stages of healing during this time. We will witness trauma, catharsis, but we will be healed of this disease. He will be purged from the spiritual, genetic, atomic, and molecular fabric of material being. And why? Because he has now put out information that he can't have babies no more. Why is that? In the meantime, we are here as dream workers to examine the body human and learn from what it is that we see as the mistakes of ignorance and the aggrandizement of ego. Look carefully at this recessive's action, this white man, this recessive's action towards nature mother. One, his campaigns of vaccination. Two, his contamination of the soil and thus our foods. Three, the torture and traumatization of innocent, gentle animal life. Four, mind, body, and soul control. I repeat, mind, body, and soul control through the church, government, and the education systems. Five, the systemic and purposeful dismantling and mutilation of that divine fabric of human life called the family and the community. Six, the contamination and pollution of the two most basic, essential things to human life, the air and the water. Plug this in for me, please, brother. And lastly, as we speak, the militarization. You took it out? You took this out. Just push that in. The militarization of outer space, the frequency wars being conducted on us to undermine and cripple higher consciousness and the intent to alter the genetics of humanity to create a more docile and compliant slave. Is biological warfare new? No, sir. The Earth has always been cleansing herself of organisms that are detrimental to her evolutionary imperatives, no matter how simple or complex. 
and this Caucasoid and his diseased being will be no different. The devastating consequences of this multi-psychotic, multi-leveled attack against the four living foundational sentinels of life, fire, air, water, and earth will be the response of nature mother herself. The Earth Mother is in fact a living, breathing, consciously acting and reacting organism of cosmic intelligence that is also going through its own personal evolutionary consciousness. Be oh, give the mic over there. Because it is alive and conscious, it not only acts, but reacts to conditions that would threaten and destabilize her own harmony. When you have done something to the body of and its intelligence, atomic intelligence, cosmic intelligence that reacts to align you is under universal law. As your atomic intelligence is aligning you, you experience symptoms such as headaches, runny nose, palpitations, fever, chills, even skin eruptions or growths. At the present time, this is comparable to the symptomatic representations or stages experienced by this earth. The final combination of psychic traumas, wars, suffering, cruelty, echo rape, and other heinous crimes and violations against both man and planet have become chronic. Brothers and sisters, we have now entered the time of the great dying. Let me repeat that. We have entered the time of the great dying as predicted by our ancestors. You see, because we are in the final stages of this paradigm, the light that once fed and sustained its existence is rapidly fading. Let me say that again. There is a light that surrounds our planet, and there's a light that surrounds you. There are certain people that do certain kinds of works that automatically causes their light to become amplified. Teacher, brother, teacher. That energy is leaving, and this planet is slowly getting darker and darker. Give big up to my two seeds, my son and my daughter over there. That's my future. Right. Yes, sir. Overstand that who you are, the more you encompass light, the more you affect the people and circumstances around you. If you go to work where you got dull ass people, you can feel how different you are because your light automatically shows you the difference. People who know what effects that they have to other people around them have a tendency to affect people in such a way that those people hate you because you agitate a cleansing in them. You cause them to want to go shit. You cause them headaches, and they don't know why. But you are working their nerves just by your presence. And just as equally, when somebody who's fucked up, dead, a succubus, drone, zombie motherfucker, you can tell. Because when you stand next to them, you start getting sleepy. Your water start getting drunk and shit. It's like a vampire sucking on your neck. Well, I'm saying that to tell you this, that those people who are of the light, they're leaving us. All these mass deaths are people who carry specific lights and the earth is getting darker and darker. Those of you who have synchronized yourselves with that light, those of you who have become addicted to the spasmodic energies emanated by its death throes will also find yourselves losing your light. The more light that fades, the more light that leaves, the more evil that crystallizes. This is why it sometimes appears to the light workers and dream walkers as if nothing is changing despite their hard and dedicated efforts. All of this is due to the fact that the source of this retrograde paradigm, its life essence, its light essence, is dissipating. Remember, the paradigm that we're living in is a conscious light that you feed from and then feed into. The light from the dead paradigm has no more life in it. 
It's like sucking on the bottom of a, of, a, of, a, of a soda bottle trying to get that last bit of soda that's off in the corner. There's nothing left of this dead-ass paradigm. There's nothing left of religion. There's nothing left of politics. There's nothing left of education. So the more you suck on that shit, the more dead you become. The weaker you become. You cannot feed your light in church. I don't give a damn how much you excuse. Oh, you know, they got a few things in there that you may want to go. Bullshit! <laughs> All of them are vampires. The words that are to come, the words that preface and the words that follow essentially are the same. And we live within a parenthesis. And in that parenthesis do we describe ourselves or at least jump off of the subject, so to speak, and qualify the subject. And I feel that's what we need to do with each, with each time that we come together. So I'm excited before. Blue, black, in the center. Ain't this good? Mm -hmm. Losing his hearing. How nice. Serious karma, man. First, I want to uh, take a moment. And I don't usually give props to old world caucasoids. But I have to take a moment and give props to this man. I have to give it up to him because this man showed a lot of courage being that he came from a brainwashed establishment or brainwashing establishment and took it to them by writing a book that set the pace for how all such books were written in the future. It isn't that he said anything new, it was that he had the courage to come forward and put it down for everyone to see it. He couldn't get it published, but guess what? This book sold more books and was more popular than if it had been published by any high-grade, top-of-the-line publisher. This thing sold more in the streets than it could have on the shelf. And I just want to take a moment to recognize what this white boy did. This is the name of the book. It's called Behold a Pale Horse. And this is the book by William Cooper. And I suggest that if you wish to get a blueprint for the New World Odor, this is it's in here. It's in here. He has ma he's mapped all of the secret documents that we were doing from the in little pieces. I remember getting the um, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars in fragmented 10 generational copies. And we were trying to circulate that, and you could hardly read it. But he put it together in here along with the uh, Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, right. along with the uh, Constitution for the New States of America, which they're getting ready to draft now, uh, the assassination of Kennedy, Rex 84, Rex 84 uh, all of the information having to do with lockdown technologies, it's in here, capsulized. Thank you, brother. So if you do have the chance, that book should be part of your library. That book should be part of what it is that you stock, as well as your food. I'm putting this up so that the camera can zoom in. And when you get the tape, you could read it for yourself. But this is an account of what happened to Bill Cooper. 
got it down off the, the net. This is an account of the assassination. Some people are saying that Bill Cooper had a gun and they tried to serve him with some papers and he opened fire and shot a deputy in the head. But we don't know that because the deputy was a rookie and could have been a sacrificial lamb so that it could set him up for an assassination to kill him and make it look like it was self-defense and that they had to take him out. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. What I'm going to do is allow the camera to just zoom on it for a little while so you could pause it and then read it for yourself and you'll know what happened. And I will say again, read everything that you get from the newspapers with a grain of salt or with your first eye. This is a mass protest that is getting ready to happen. We don't have all the details, but it is a mass protest, one million or more strong, against the New World Order. Underground peoples coming forward over the net, flooding the Congress. I'll get more information at this because, uh, you know, quiet as it's kept, I know you know everyone that not everybody is going for this okie doke. And if you talk to the average man or woman on the streets, they know something's fishy. It ain't all clicking together because as you will see, certain things just don't fit. And everybody who seems to be in line with it are, are, are becoming more and more of the minority than the majority. And what is happening is, is those few are going to focus in on the minority and make it look like the majority based upon the fact that the media can blow everything out of proportion anyway. So I would suggest we keep in contact so that by the next time we get together, hopefully, I will be able to find out what is the ongoing dynamic surrounding this protest that is supposed to be emanating from middle America outward towards the coasts, everywhere there is a quote-unquote American quote-unquote citizen. <clears throat> now before I go forward, the purpose of that is to circumvent this. If we can um, maybe Good tilt light. that a little bit to the side so that we could, uh, uh, yeah, right. right. This is going to be the new flag. Home defense roundup. It's inter internal security for the new world order. It's going to be everybody. Black, white, native, I don't care who you are. If you got a number and you got a source or you got a license, they want you. Uncle Sam wants you. So with that, I'm going to start off at a walk, and I'm going to touch upon what is to happen for us spiritually so that we can gird ourselves against the war that is not actually taking place on this plane. It's actually just expressing itself visibly on this plane. But there is a serious war going on on the spiritual and etheric planes. So first, I wish to say that I have a lot of ground to cover, so much so that it may not be possible to relate to you all of the vital points in this single session. I will, however, provide for enough time to end these proceedings with a secret, semi-secret communique that by my revealing it to you may put yours and my life in danger which is why I am duty bound to forewarn everyone in attendance here that if they wish to leave at the time I am to reveal that information, they should do so. Another thing, I am, as by law, if we still have any, 
going to make an announcement to the gathering here that if any one of you, singular or plurally, are members of the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, the police in and out of jurisdictions, if any of you or any collectives of you are here present today to either film or tape record this session, you are not allowed to do so. And I am asking you now, by law, to reveal yourself and leave. If not, all that is said here cannot be used against anyone here present. And that goes for any associated with those organizations or individuals. That being the case, I will proceed. As always, I wish to give thanks to our illustrious ancestors who by their genetic uplinking and downloading of inspiration into me and all who are gathered here, and by the grace of the divine cosmic intelligences, I am permitted to speak to you today. I wish to thank my family for being my family, extended and immediate. I wish to thank all those who assisted me in this arduous task towards revealing the reality and towards helping in our enlightenment. I'd like to give special thanks to Queen Sister Mother Nalani Sopneti Ra. I would like to give thanks to Sister Queen Renee Spruill. I'd like to give thanks to Sister Puma Lagitania. I would like to give thanks to Sister Karen Dickerson. I would like to give thanks to Brother Nkosi. Thanks to Dr. Ann Brown, Professor Rosalind Jeffries, my blood brother, not in attendance here today, my blood brothers, Vernon Burton, and Leonardo Reyes. I would like to give a big up to Brother Africa Bambada and the Zulu Nation. I would like to give another big up to Brother Hakeem Bey for all the work that he and his circle are doing. And of course, the brothers constituting the metaphysical university of the streets Grassroots Productions, Brother Big Man, Brother Leroy, Brother Azariah in Black Market Productions, all and dig in and help to establish this new paradigm. Everybody give it up for everybody concerned. <laughs> With all that said, I'd like to clarify that the title of today's lecture is in no way totally connected to the substance of what is about to be decoded. In fact, it may want to be renamed at the end of this proceedings, and you may name it the way you wish to. Most of what I am saying is just to kind of call the spirit to the moment anyway. Yes, we will cover the topic of biological warfare, and yes, by all means, we will endeavor to cover as much info on genetic ascension, but if by the time we are through here today, it appears that we do not cover all that is to be covered, please rest assured that it will be continued in our next gathering, and I intend to do so. During our time together, it may appear as if I'm jumping from subject to subject. This cannot be helped due to the short time we have to overstand all that is occurring simultaneously to this moment, even as we are gathered here today. I cannot catch up with everything and bring it into perspective, I have to take one thing at a time and then each one of you are to pull it together, you see, and tie the rope around that and strengthen yourself around those pieces of information. I have tons of information, I have become initiated in so many different factors around so many different subjects that it's very difficult for me to just speak on one thing. So beloved, for as long as you have known me, you have always heard me say, that no matter, no matter what, 
that anything having to do this with the spirit and the activities of the spirit are no accident. Therefore, this gathering and all gatherings occurring like this around the world are vibratory cells of progressive awareness that is incubating the consciousness seeds of the coming time. You have chosen to choose yourself to become an elite circle of light workers who by your very thought processes make you eligible for membership in a cosmic elite. But as you know, to whom much is given, much is expected. You, I call my fellow dream walkers. From now on, those who come in attendance together with me are essentially stepping into the circle of dream walkers. The following words were spoken to me at our last gathering by the collective. That is, the harmonic tone that struck by each of you as you give your precious attention to me. Do you realize that every time you pay attention, you strike a note, a chord, a tone that is harmonized Everything about you right now, every interference that comes with every spurious thought has now quieted. Because why? You have given me your attention. And when you go into a mode of learning, all thought stops. So most of your thoughts are based upon discordant experiences. Things that you're going through right now. The, the events of the, the time, the events of the day, the family the society immediate and extended. All of that is creating a thought process, a thought flow that is causing your bioelectricity to become disharmonized. As we are here together gathered and we are paying attention to one another, that attention quiets those discordant sounds. And now you are in the realm of the dream walker. So learning ceases thought. And here's what each one of you all said to me. I am a dream walker. I am the I am that will be. And as this is so, I am God asleep. For God could not know itself unless I sleep. For God awake is a God unknown. For all that is, actually is, all that is not. So I sleep, and in that sleep do I dream. And in my dream do I break the seal of perfect ignorance. To witness, to become, to feel, to desire, to touch the dark path. To emerge from the other side, a seed of light. And S-E-E-D that has S-E-E-N, my true self. I am God, incarcerated, sentenced to a technicolor dream, the perfect dream of an imperfect perfection, where forever and eternal, I am as I sleep, the I am that I am, a dream walker in the I am that will be. That is what you told me. I've been told that I am of Olmec Mayan descent. I was also told that they wrote many a prophecy concerning this very time that we are living in now. Their prophecies were documented in calendar form called the Zokin because the blood codes of their genetic programming made them obsessive, quintessential timekeepers. In the Olmec Mayan prophecies, it was stated that in our time frame numbering 1987, a planetary alignment will cause the striking of a celestial tone or harmonic that would be a cosmic alarm clock sounding. This clock would signal the fact that our solar system, a consciousness time zone of awareness, has reached its final stages in an evolutionary cycle for the human atomic structure called the Ninth Hell. This was written by the Olmec Mayans. In 1987, a tone was struck, and that tone was a doorway that was described by the ancestors as the Ninth Hell. 
And it's interesting that a movie came out called The Ninth Gate. The Ninth Gate, starring Johnny Depp. He played a man in this movie called Dean Corsa. Dean Corsa, C-O-R-S-E. Now, it's funny because you know I have to tell you that every time you look at a movie, or you hear a news story, you cannot look at things in the, in, in, in the surface. You must investigate why they choose the name, why they choose the particular person. So you look up the word Dean, and you see the word Dean means an administrative officer in charge of a college faculty, a division of a university an officer of a college or high school who counsels students and supervises the enforcement of rules, the head of a chapter of canons governing a cathedral or collegiate church, a priest, a priest appointed to oversee a group of parishes within a diocese. You take the key words, and you put them aside. His last name was Corsa. Dean Corsa. Taking the significant words within the definition dynamic and placing it with the name Corsa, Corso, you see the word corpse. So he essentially was a priest of the dead. He was dead and he didn't know it. He was visited by an archangel that kept on bugging him. Now, Johnny Depp played a man who was a priest of the dead. He was looking for a book called The Nine Gates of the Kingdom of Shadows, written in, get this, 1666, by a name named Aristito Torqui. He was also hoping to find another book, a book reputed to have been written by Satan himself called The De La Melenicum. The De La Melenicum. I'm telling you books you need to go and check. In the end, he is shown the ritual of the nine gates, and the movie leaves you at the point where he is going for a face-to-face -face meeting with Satan himself. And that was the end of the movie, and he is fading away. As you see the movie vamping, he is walking into the light that is supposed to be the meeting place and the gate of hell itself to have a meeting with Satan. And then, in 2001, you see him emerge in another movie called From Hell. Putting the two movies together, what do you get? The Ninth Gate from Hell. You need to go and see those two pictures Rent the book, I mean, rent the copy, look at the copy and see what's being said by all the people who are playing the roles that they are playing. And then go see from hell. There are messages every time these particular subjects are brought up. They do it for themselves. They do it to entertain themselves and to inform themselves. So there are no accidents. There is no accident to the fact that he made a movie called The Ninth Gate and then after another movie he makes From Hell. Something to think about, something to discuss in depth at another time. The Almec Mayan prophecy went on to say that when this tone or this cosmic alarm harmonic was struck, 
It would be the signal for the beginning of 25 years of madness, chaos, suffering, and anguish before our solar system begins its ascent to the 13th heaven. Now, if you think the Illuminati is not keeping pace with everything that our ancestors have put down, you're sadly mistaken. Because, essentially, all, all subjects of our ancestors are represented specifically in the symbologies of today. I told you the last time that this particular word is significant in that the name itself works towards why you think that dead ass man, white man, on the cross there, how you think he keeps being alive? Because spiritually, when you walk in that place, he's sucking your life force. Anybody ever see that flick, Life Force? Yes. Check that flick. Check Life Force. Now, what's left are the burning emblems, and those who have sustained themselves on it are scrambling in their spiritual death throes to feed on what's left. We, on the other side, must identify ourselves with the new incoming light source, the new code for atomic and molecular consciousness. This particular light life source feels faint, but it is strong, like the sun on the days after the winter solstice. It's cold, but it's still bright. There is another light source that is feeding those who have amplified their, their personal power. Once you throw away all of this classicistic bullshit, stand naked, that's a ritual for everybody to do. Go in front of your mirror and stand naked. See what you look like when you first came out. Without all the trappings, take out your Aries and everything that put the personality of you in this moment. Because you have to strip yourself of everything that you have become before you can make the cross, the crossing. You cannot be quickened with old shit attached to you. Don't grab the TV when we switch because you see, you're going to see different indications of the switch of the new paradigm. What's going to happen? Shit's going to fade in from the other, from the other side. And it's going to be floating in the air and you're going to say, oh shit, what's that? I ain't even high. <laughs> don't touch those things that are fading in from fourth and fifth because your body is so polluted that if you touch it you'll be pulled in with that shit and you ain't ready for the other side <laughs> know that you are transiting and there's times when even at your highest peak you're gonna be forgetting shit it's like oh man what was I just doing those of us who are transiting don't have memory of this time or anything that's acquainted with it. We're losing the memory of this time because the memory is based on the light that was fed from the old paradigm. If the old paradigm is going, then all the shit attached to it is going. That's right. So stop worrying about your memory and thinking you're getting Alzheimer's. In fact, Alzheimer's is an indication, the fact that it's rising, is an indication of just how dead the paradigm is becoming. Because the light source necessary for logical thinking, gone. And that's exactly what the education system, what religion, and all that shit does to you. Just because you got a whole lot of facts in your head, don't mean you ain't Alzheimer's. <laughs> Just because you're going to sit before a professor who look like he know his shit, don't mean he ain't Alzheimer's. Because he got a bunch of dead facts in his head. At this time, people like ourselves represent a skeleton crew. This is a skeleton crew. Left behind to act as the receptors for the incoming paradigm. To guide those who are yet to awaken. Those who are yet to be born into this new frequency harmonic. Truth be told, the Galactic Confederation is at this time seriously considering the merits of even keeping this planet in its present location. 
whether to just destroy this shit or move it because its proximity to other neighboring and overlapping dimensions and harmonics is polluting them with all of the disruptive and discordant thoughts based on hate, fear, egocentrism. The first pollution is thought pollution. And the atmosphere around thought pollution must be stinking to those who are on higher realms. And every time we cycle, remember, just think about the fact that in our son, and we're moving around our son, but our son is moving around something else. And that we are moving in, and that when we moved into that meteor shower, the meteor shower was coming here, we moved into it as it was passing this way. So we are, the whole solar system is moving into a whole other position where all of the thought processes that created what it is that we are now trapped in today are dying. By the year 2007 or maybe even sooner, indications of just how sick and disgusting our planet has become in its psychic fabric will begin to become evident. You, my brothers and sisters, will begin to see the symptoms of our diseased planet manifesting on the surface in the form of unique, never before identified funguses and mosses. Listen to me carefully. They will begin to anchor themselves first in our forests, then in our foods, and then on our skins. As all mosses and fungi are creatures that manifest in darkness, their appearances will be more than symbolic of the fact that the Earth Mother is losing her light. Listen carefully. You're going to find mosses growing in places where moss never grew before. Once these new life forms take hold, they will mutate according to the psychic conditions that presently prevail on the planet and thus form an intelligence of their own. Listen carefully. This will obviously be a disaster to all the vegetation as well as to the lower animal life forms and eventually up the food chain to humanity itself. There will be no medical quote unquote cure. Tens of millions will die. These funguses will look like spider webs and they may very well be life forms that were created. They mutated once brought into contact with this ecosystem. They are the children of the cloudless clouds of death. In fact, over the past seven to eight decades, biologists, anthropologists, and environmentalists have been discovering animals in the wilds who have been mutated in their forms. These are the advanced guard to many breeds of new life forms that are due to appear. New life forms for new Earth situations. The metaphysical consequences of our planet in the wake of all this thought-based madness engulfing our planet is that discordant resonating energy configurations or vibrating templates which are acting as portals are allowing certain life forms, certain etheric life forms that exist on peripheral dimensions to enter into this realm. These etheric life forms are finding entrance through resonating genetic pathways into physicality. Let me say that again. They are finding their way through resonating genetic pathways into physicality. They have the ability to do this due to the diminished light envelope decaying around our planet. Just as you feel that a fly or bugs or uh, what's that thing? Uh, maggots form around dead things? Well, that's what's happening consciously. Consciously, on the metaphysical realm, on the etheric realm, we have maggots forming around this planet. And they are life forms that are yet to manifest. And these are the life forms that represent just how dead our spirituality is. Most of these new organisms will be created by the joint effort of a psychotic scientific oligarchy and the ulcers that form in our planetary light field as a result. This extra dimensional etheric life forms are low energy life forms, parasitic in nature, attracted to our own ulcerated spiritual resonance. The same way that flies and mosquitoes are attracted by filth, decay, and the stench of stagnant water. Now, I hope I've whetted your appetite. Because before I review 
and expound upon my last seminar, 9-11. I would like to touch upon another aspect of bio-warfare that the victims who participate willingly in, and that's the use of cellular phones. Break it down. My brothers and sisters, first realize that the cellular phone is broadcasted on theta wave bands. They found out that the theta wave band is what thought, that's the band that thought uses when you think. The reason why they found that out is because you used to have something called UHF and UHV, VHF. When you switched to that, people would call and complain of hearing when they're not in the room or in the outside, stations going off in their head. When the theta wave band is being used, it is being synchronized with the same band that thought uses to communicate to itself. So you think that it is coincidental that they got rid of the theta wave band and put it on the cellular phone band? Now I know that cell phones have become as necessary as breathing to some of you guys. <laughs>